objects in this room are years of history. One that has been put together by a master artist, a master Nigerian artist who continues to make our country proud with the wonderful works of art he keeps creating. And the unique thing about him is that he doesn't want this work or this talent to die with him. He's passionate about passing it on to the next generation. So he has created a series of programs to make sure that he sustains a legacy. I'm sorry, we're wondering, what am I talking about? Well, you find out more about that after the short break. Welcome to Art House. I'm Melinda Akinami. <laughs> When I say an artist, I mean the one who is building things. Some with a brush, some with a shovel, some choose a pen. The main thing is to be moved, to love, to hope, to tremble, to live. <laughs> A great writer once said that there is no art to find a mind's construction in the face. Those words aptly describe the situation in Mushi, a suburb in Lagos State, which houses veteran artist Bruce Onogwaikuria, who is on his feet and hard at work, with an assistant eagerly following instructions on this piece. Not to disturb this creative process, we watch. When the time is right, we sit down and chat about 50 years of creating, discovering and perfecting several techniques in printmaking, relief sculpture and painting. It's a pleasure to have you on Art House, Professor Bruce Onogwaikoya. Thank you very much. You're a great example of an experimental artist. Now, back in the old days, what made you dare to be different? Uh, like a child who plays with uh, toys. You get tired of uh, a particular toy, and then you get a new toy, and then you, you get excited and you work with it. Again, you get tired, and so you move to another one. That is how experimental art is. You pick one medium, you work on it, you try to extend it as far as possible, and then when you're done with it, before you're done with it, something new has a nature from it, and then you start exploring that, and so you go on forever. That is what experimental art is about. Moving from one, one um, um, inspiration to another one. Um, you know, like it's possible to to draw a line that will connect everything, but one thing is leading to another one, which is a little different, another one a little different, and so on and so forth. This multi-talented artist was born on August the 30th, 1932, in Abaroto Delta State. He stayed there till his family moved to Benin City, Edo State, where he attended the Western Boys High School. His first rendezvous with painting was beholding the works of Emmanuel Irabo. From there, he was hooked. And it's been over 50 years of experimenting with different techniques, breaking boundaries in printmaking, sculpture, and painting. Now, is there anyone, maybe you say, closer to your heart? Anyone you prefer? I started with painting, and then, um, then went into printmaking. And then... Um, the printmaking, of course, um, many people don't understand, don't understand it. Printmaking is halfway between all these other techniques. And so because there's a bit of painting in printmaking, a bit of sculpture in printmaking, a bit of um, using different kind of materials. So um, when you're into printmaking, um, at one time or the other, you, you, you naturally branch into some of those are similarities and you branch it to them and and, um, and, and and do something different and exciting about them. So I started from painting 
I started because I, I specialized in painting, and then from painting, I, I went back to printmaking, which was my, which was to have been my um, original line of specialization, but it was not discovered in the high school. I discovered it after the high school, mm -hmm. and so I went on doing prints, and then while in prints, I was doing things in sculpture, um, also in painting, but eventually I have come back to making real canvas painting the way I started. While at the Nigerian College of Arts, Science and Technology, now the Amadou Bello University Zaria in Kaduna State, he and some of his colleagues made a name for themselves when they formed the Zaria Art Society, which went down in history as the Zaria Rebels. Can you tell us more about that rebellion? What happened is that um, um, we found that um, the situation in Nigeria, the background in Nigeria, the art in Nigeria, the folklore, the history, philosophy and so on, were very, very deep. And um, um, we expected that some of this should be looked around our studies. But when we found that um, the expatriates were um, interested in, in imparting academic, the academic side of the art, mm -hmm. well, we did what they wanted us to do, but went behind to talk, the group went behind to talk about what we think we needed to produce the real art that represents the country. So um, we were doing that, but we didn't even know that we were breaking new grounds. So um, that actually set us aside from uh, some of the other people. Um, it must not be, you know, usually when they talk about rebellion and so on and so forth, they, they're, they're looking at uh, student throwing stones, carrying placards and all that. No, no, no. We, we, never, we never did anything of such. Uh, what we did, we did exactly what they asked us to do in the class, the academic side of it. But when we retired to our cubicles, we now discussed how to present our art to rightly project our culture and generation. Still to come on At House, stay glued to your television set because the fun has just begun. We're going to be showing you other aspects of this wonderful pool of creativity, Dr. Bruce Onobaipea, and how he goes about doing all those wonders he keeps on creating, the details and dynamics. Well, he's shot as a very simple person, we live in a very simple environment, like love the nature and just the simple things. Mm -hmm. But tell you something, mm -hmm. art is very complex. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I don't <laughs> 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 is also complex. <laughs> you get all those details after the show break. So don't go anywhere. Establishing the Hamatan workshop in Delta State in 1998 was one way to ensure that he gives back to his community. The Bruce Onobel Pereira Foundation has begun the Hamatan Workshop Series, which started in 1998 in Abarito, Delta State. Now, will you say charity begins at home? <laughs> <laughs> charity begins at home, yes. But, but you, you know, um, you, uh, when you think of a foundation and you think of a place with the correct atmosphere for learning, um, a place where people will uh, will will produce their best. Um, sometimes you have to move out of um, a very busy metropolis, like Lagos. Yeah, like Lagos. So that was what we did. Uh, in um, in Abaruto, you find uh, space. There's a lot of space. We're very close to nature. We have trees around. We have a landscape uh, landscape premises. Um, we have been able to put channels where artists will say, put up main buildings where they work and so on as well. So everything was complete there and, and also uh, it was also necessary to go to an area where it will be 
it, it, it was possible for people to study local problems, look at problems and showcase them, tell people about them, and also to inspire the local people. You want to inspire the local people um, to feel that something, there's something great coming from them, not only that you have to go to Lagos and go ab abroad to America or to Europe before they can um, feel great. So a feeling, feeling of pride and so on is, um, is infused into being there in Ambarota. Um, many, other, many, many other good things uh, that we are getting by moving out of the metropolis to, to the countryside. And this year, the theme of the Hamatan workshop is the about the centenary celebrations. We look at um, we look at the season, and then frame our theme around ar ar around the around that season. What is in the air now is uh, the centenary, Nigerian centenary, and um, a lot of water has passed under the bridge. So um, um, it's uh, it would be a great motivation, really, to talk about this. To a group of students, whether they are professional, professionals or beginners and so on, to just look at um, at Nigeria and pick one small aspect of it and let that be a theme for art, artistic creation. Uh, also, what we're thinking is that uh, if we are able to get ourselves up to a hundred people, we we'll let the hundred people pick one aspect of Nigeria dwell on it in, in art and then at the end of it a portfolio is put together you call it the Nigerian Centenary Portfolio so we have thoughts like that because uh, I mean if you if you want to work on Nigeria as a theme I mean the, mm. the sky is the limit since no man is an island working in groups is highly essential as it challenges the mind and aids creativity Part of the thing we do in the Avatar Workshop is actually to lead on the participants, lead them on. They probably have not been thinking about um, trying to document a country or try to bring out ideas about the country. Um, and so when, you, when a location like this comes, we seize it and then use it to bring out the best that we can think of. Um, excite people and remind people of some of the good things that that has been happening in Nigeria, some of the good things that we hope for. That is it. We did this during the um, Golden Jubilee. We did it during the Golden Jubilee. In fact, a group of us put one joint work together which was shown at Abuja. Uh, we hope we'll be able to do something like that at this uh, Jubilee, at uh, this uh, seminar show. Abaruto and Mushi are located in different states, but the simplicity of the environment is sure to inspire any creative mind. That's why he chose to remain here, even when he could live in any other portion.